among you know the uh, top five percent of business schools that uh, are actually accredited by AACSC. So we have about uh, uh, 1,100 undergraduate students in about uh, 11 majors. Uh, interestingly, the uh, major with the uh, with the uh, highest enrollment is business administration, and I'll talk a little bit about that. And we have a very significant proportion of our students uh, as international uh, students. And international students, especially from India, tend to be very successful in our program. Uh, and if you want more details, I'm sure you've already looked at the uh, you know, university website, but here is a, a link to, to that. Uh, so the different uh, majors and minors, uh, most of our uh, uh, majors also have minors. There are a couple where we don't really have uh, minors. Uh, so the difference between a major and a minor is essentially in the number of uh, courses or credits you have to take in order to uh, complete the minor. Minors typically are you know, 18 to 21 credits. Majors tend to be significantly uh, uh, more than that. And typically, you cannot graduate with just a minor. You actually have to uh, declare a major, right? So, uh, <clears throat> uh, so in alphabetic order, almost, uh, you know, we have majors and minors in accounting. Accounting is a very popular program. Our placement for accounting is is uh, pretty good, uh, and uh, we have excellent faculty. Very very good teachers, very good researchers. So uh, it's, it's a popular uh, program. As I said, business administration uh, is where a lot of our students uh, start off with. It is a general uh, uh, curriculum, meaning you get a broad overview of everything in, in uh, the business domain uh, without necessarily focusing on, on a specific area within business. So a lot of times our uh, incoming students start off as business admini administration majors, and then they uh, 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 declare uh, an additional uh, major in the area that they find most interesting in uh, business. So one of the things uh, that uh, may or may not be uh, clear is that uh, almost all the programs in the School of Business, we have, uh, you know, all students take a common business core uh, and then uh, the specialization is, is essentially the major. Okay? So the specialization is nine to 10 courses. Uh, but the rest of the uh, business program is common to almost all these majors. Uh, some of the majors that are have, have a different core are economics and uh, hospitality management, uh, but we'll get to those in, in just a little bit. Uh, the good thing about the economics program is, uh, you know, the major is a STEM designated for, you know, international students. That is uh, uh, an important aspect, I think, to keep in mind because it adds two years to your optional practical training. And I think that's, that's a, uh, definitely a consideration if, if that is the intent. Uh, we also have a, a STEM designated one year master's program that I'll talk about. Uh, so some of our international students you know, complete their, uh, you know, major in the area of interest, and then uh, they, they uh, spend an additional year and get, uh, you know, the master's in data analytics. And that then gives them the additional two years of uh, OPT. So uh, <clears throat> uh, economics, as I said, is, is a STEM designated major, and it is different in the sense that it is uh, a, a little more uh, on the uh, 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 liberal arts or, or uh, uh, you know, it's, it's not as uh, business-like as all the other majors are. Uh, entrepreneurship, uh, we have the only undergraduate entrepreneurship program in the SUNY system. And, uh, you know, we have, uh, 
the uh, <clears throat> uh, so so that that is an advantage, and uh, we also have uh, an honor society called Sigma Nu Tau, which is based in SUNY Plattsburgh. And because the honor society for the uh, discipline is uh, at SUNY Plattsburgh, we we get we, we you know have a lot of competitions where our students participate. Obviously, students from all over the area come and participate, and there are major uh, 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 prizes and scholarships associated with that. Uh, our finance major is is uh, booming. Uh, you know, we recently got an endowment, and we have uh, set up a financial trading lab, uh, and we have, uh, <clears throat> uh, I believe, a subscription for uh, four Bloomberg terminals. And if any of you have seen any of the uh, Wall Street related movies, you will see, uh, you know. Uh, the traders using those screens with red and green letters and stuff scrolling on them and all of that. So, you know, we get uh, uh, Bloomberg data and, and that can be used uh, uh, for a bunch of things, but, uh, you know, knowledge of the Bloomberg terminals and systems is, is an advantage in uh, the financial industry. Our hospitality uh, management program is uh, accredited by uh, uh, a separate body called ACFA uh, that accredits uh, the uh, hospitality uh, management or hospitality programs. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, again, uh, unique. Uh, our uh, students do uh, uh, very well, like most of uh, the SPE uh, graduates, our placement rate uh, for hospitality management is more than 90%. So pretty much, you know, 90 to 92% of our majors either, uh, you know, get jobs or go for graduate school or uh, choose uh, not to look for a job for whatever reason. So, uh, you know, we, we seem to be doing pretty well. Uh, and uh, the unique thing about hospitality management is that uh, it includes about uh, 600 hours of uh, industry uh, practical experience into the curriculum. So students are required to uh, work 600 hours outside uh, the uh, classroom in order to uh, graduate. Uh, international business uh, is is a, a very uh, popular major, especially for uh, uh, international students, right? So uh, uh, we uh, <clears throat> uh, provide our uh, potential students or graduates with a broad-based management education, and the focus for everything is. Uh, essentially on global and international uh, perspectives. Uh, so in addition to the common core of uh, you know, uh, required business curriculum, students take international marketing, international accounting, you know, uh, uh, multinational management, international uh, trade, and, and, and so on. So basically to expand their horizon. Uh, Management and management information systems, I'll talk about in, in slightly more detail. Like I said, that's those are the uh, programs that uh, I oversee. So I, I will talk about those in slightly more detail. Uh, so marketing, uh, you know, is, is again quite popular. Uh, marketing, uh, uh, one of the uh, things that stands out, we have a very uh, strong and vibrant uh, um, American Marketing Association student chapter. They do a lot of stuff, include uh, you know, annual travels to the AMA conference in New Orleans. Uh, <clears throat> a lot of the, uh, or at least some of the focus of these marketing courses you take uh, is, is on Canada. We are very close to Canada, so a lot of curriculum uh, engages uh, 
uh, Canadian businesses and you know the similarities and differences between how things are done in Canada and the US. Uh, most of the projects in marketing tend to be with real world clients, which is true of most of the other uh, majors also. Uh, but marketing, uh, you know, kind of. Uh, so in your advertising class, you will actually be creating uh, an ad campaign for a real uh, client. A, a lot of these clients are local companies that really benefit from uh, the uh, work that uh, students do, and they actually use uh, a, a lot of. Uh, uh, stuff that's uh, created by students so you can see the real world impact and then uh, our uh, global supply chain management program is uh, again one of the uh, only uh, uh, two uh, supply chain programs in the entire SUNY system at the undergrad level and uh, <clears throat> uh, you know our, our graduates go work for uh, a, a number of uh, uh, companies, whether, and, and, you know, supply chain management is uh, uh, used in any industry. Right now, you know, there is a lot of talk going on about uh, the various vaccines, or at least the uh, Pfizer vaccine that is coming out uh, or has been approved. Uh, for uh, COVID-19. And one of the major uh, things that needs to happen is that, uh, you know, that vaccine needs to be moved from where it is produced and stored right now, which is in, you know, uh, the upper Midwest to all 50 states in, in the country. And, uh, you know, and and the, the limiting factor being that, uh, you know, the vaccine has to be stored at uh, minus 70 degrees centigrade or something like that. And so that, and, and those are the kinds of issues and problems that uh, you, know, you would learn how to deal with in, in uh, uh, supply chain uh, management. So, so that's kind of an overview of all the programs. And uh, like I said, uh, we, we also have some programs that are not really uh, just minors or majors. Uh, in, in specific uh, disciplines. So we have uh, a, a minor in business analytics that is offered out of, uh, uh, you know, my department. We also offer a certificate. Again, certificates are uh, similar to minors, except that they, they uh, anyone can, can sign up for a certificate. You don't have to be enrolled uh, in a major in order to add a minor, right? So we recently added a certificate in human resource management. We've had a certificate in healthcare informatics. And, you know, I also uh, mentioned that we have a one-year master's of science in data analytics program that uh, is, uh, that is important. And one of the most recent programs we have is a, a, a five-year, a four plus one uh, a program we have uh, where you get a bachelor's in, in accounting and uh, you know this one-year uh, MS in data analytics. And what it does, for those of you who are interested in accounting, you know that in order to uh, get your CPA uh, license, you need to complete 150 credits. That's kind of the rule in the US. So this four plus one or a five-year program actually allows you to do that seamlessly because by the time you graduate, you know, you, you'll have 120 credits in your undergrad program and then 30 credits in the, uh, uh, in the master's. So that uh, works very well and uh, it's, you know, something that uh, uh, we had been uh, uh, wanting to do and we've finally been able to do it. So you can actually apply for the uh, five-year combined program uh, in addition to just the accounting. Uh, so quick overview of uh, the various uh, programs in, in, in uh, the management information systems and analytics department. 
right? So uh, uh, bachelor's of science in management, we essentially, uh, you know, uh, provide information on or, you know, we learn the various management theories that provide the foundation of success in organizations. And quite a few of our uh, graduates actually go work for uh, uh, not-for-profit organizations. And one of the things that uh, our, some of our graduates gravitate towards is human resource management. And uh, so that was the reason why we created the certificate in uh, human resource management. So with the right electives in, in the management program, you can actually uh, graduate with a major in management and a certificate in uh, human resource management. Uh, so, you know, different uh, careers in, in uh, of, for some of our graduates. And I'll talk a little bit more about our uh, 2019 graduates, but in general, you know, our uh, uh, graduates have worked in human resource or management, uh, general management, in consulting, in operations or uh, project management, even uh, sports management. So any industry where you need to manage people, processes and resources, uh, the management program uh, prepares you for that. Uh, our management information systems program, essentially, uh, uh, you know, we learn how to uh, solve business problems using information systems and technology. Uh, so, you know, <clears throat> uh, in here, we have a, a bunch of different focuses that the uh, uh, students can take. Uh, you know, e-business is, is, is big. So, you know, uh, anything and everything you want to do online is, is where this comes in. Uh, cybersecurity, uh, we actually have a center for cybersecurity and technology that uh, we uh, host. Uh, and so, uh, you know, it's a, a good fit for our, uh, uh, for our uh, majors. Uh, so they can do a lot of hands-on work in that uh, center and do internships there and stuff. Uh, healthcare informatics. So if our students choose the healthcare informatics track, they can also uh, satisfy the requirements for the healthcare informatics certificate. Uh, so then when you graduate, you get a, you know, a BS as well as a certificate. And then if you are interested in a bunch of different things, then you take the general track where you can pick and choose uh, courses that you find interesting. Uh, the, again, uh, careers in uh, MIS, consulting, user interface design, uh, analytics is, is becoming more and more uh, popular. Uh, <clears throat> business analysts or systems analysts, uh, you know, a lot of companies need people with domain knowledge in business in order to translate the business needs into, uh, you know, system specifications or requirements. And that's where our MIS program actually trains you for that. So you understand business, but you also understand, uh, you know, how technology is developed. So you can you know, do the translation. Uh, cybersecurity, we've uh, placed a, a bunch of people in uh, uh, a number of different organizations, including IBM and, uh, you know, Center for Internet Security, uh, Ernst & Young. Uh, <clears throat> in e-commerce or e-business, a uh, bunch of, uh, you know, companies that do business online, something that I would add to this would be Amazon. And of course, graduate school. So a lot of our students, uh, or at least a few of our students go to grad school, uh, mostly international students. And we tend to place our students. They are good students. They go to good graduate schools. Uh, we talked about uh, the different uh, minors. Okay, so uh, business analytics and MIS. Uh, certificate programs, I've already talked about both of these. Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, as I have mentioned before, we have this Master's of Science in Data Analytics. It's a 10, maybe 11 month, 30 credit uh, program 
you take two courses in the summer, uh, four courses in fall, four courses in spring, and you're done. Uh, and uh, the focus here is on you know, knowledge and tools that uh, allow our graduates to, uh, uh, you know, essentially uh, gather, analyze, interpret, share, and apply data in meaningful ways to help decision making uh, in, in organizations and, you know, there is a huge push by organizations to, to, to be able to do all of this. So the facilities we host, uh, you know, we have the Center for Cybersecurity and Technology. Uh, by the way, all of these facilities are in this beautiful building that uh, I showed you the uh, picture for. Uh, so we have the Center for Cybersecurity and Technology. We have a dedicated lab for our MIS program. Uh, by the way, we also have a dedicated lab for accounting uh, students. Uh, we have, as I said, uh, a third lab or, or you know trading lab with Bloomberg terminals for uh, finance. And even though it, it's these labs are designated for specific programs, they are open to all students. So if as an MIS student or an accounting student, uh, you are interested in learning more about, uh, you know, using Bloomberg, uh, we can, uh, you can definitely use the facilities. So all these facilities are open uh, to all students. So you don't necessarily have to be in a specific major in order to use the facilities. And then for uh, our graduate students, we have a separate uh, uh, graduate study center where you know they can work collaboratively and that includes uh, a, a separate lab for graduate students and that lab is only for graduate students but we also have facilities and study centers and study rooms and uh, uh, project rooms uh, within this building that are open to all students and there are some rooms that can be reserved by students uh, for specific uh, times uh, so again, you know, if you have, uh, uh, you know, a, a ten o'clock class, and then you have another class at uh, one o'clock, and you don't want to go back to your uh, dorm or or, or your home, uh, and you want to hang around in in the uh, school of business, uh, you can you can. So there are spaces where you can you know do your homework and work on projects and things like that. Uh, so this is uh, the other thing that happens because most of our majors have that common business core. Uh, you know, by taking an additional, you know, six, seven courses, you can actually double major. So uh, we have, uh, you know, a, a lot of students who double major uh, in, in uh, you know, in, I have more information about the programs that uh, we host, right? So, uh, you know, MIS, we have students who double major, you know, in accounting, global supply chain management, in management, business administration, finance, economics. So pretty much uh, all, uh, 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 you know, majors in the School of Business other than hospitality and uh, economics, Primarily because we don't share that common business core. That might change, right? Uh, and similarly for management, uh, you know, we have uh, double majors in MIS, uh, international business, marketing, entrepreneurship, and uh, business administration. So this in a nutshell is all that I uh, have to present. Uh, and if you have questions, uh, now would be a good time. All right. Thank you, Dr. Rampal. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, if anyone has questions, um, please send them our way. Uh, I see one asking, uh, Dr. Rampal, is management a STEM program? Uh, management is not. Uh, so in the at the undergrad level, uh, the only STEM program we have is uh, economics at this point in time. Okay. 
Um, and a follow up to that, is there any possibility of taking management as a minor? We used to have management as a minor, uh, and we are in the process of creating a, a new management minor. But what works out well is, uh, you know, we have uh, a minors in business analytics, and we have the certificate program in human resource management. So, you know, if within management, your focus area is human resource management, the certificate works as well or, or better than the uh, minor. Okay. So, yeah, so it, it sounds like there's a few different options and paths that mm -hmm. students can take, right? Most definitely. So I, from what I know, um, if I were a student coming in and I had these ideas and questions, like mm -hmm. it would be a good idea to come to someone like you or to faculty mm -hmm. or whatever and, and discuss the options uh, you know, what, what, what would be the best fit for each student as an individual? Most definitely. And, and the, the good thing is, as I mentioned, that, you know, most of our, uh, uh, you know, uh, freshman and sophomore courses are common to uh, most of the uh, business programs. So, you know, you come in and you say, okay, I, you know, I'm interested in business administration. And uh, you, you come in and you take you know, the first MIS course and you say, I love it and I want to switch to MIS and you can, I mean, you can either add MIS as a second major or uh, you can, uh, you know, switch to MIS without uh, uh, losing any time. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, if, if you decide early enough, you know, probably, you know, by the end of your uh, sophomore year, if you've decided that you want to add a second major or, uh, you know, you want to switch majors, you can do it without any uh, additional time. In fact, most of our double majors, uh, you can actually complete within the 120 uh, credits, uh, mm -hmm. provided you choose uh, early enough and, and, and you make the right choices for, for the electives in the uh, different programs. So definitely, you know, if someone is interested in, in, in trying to figure out, reach out, you know, uh, you, know you, can, you can find uh, all department chairs are more than happy to, uh, you know, spend time with you and help you figure out what, what you know, your best Absolutely. options are. Yeah, and I, I know um, for many of the students out there who saw my first presentation about our university, um, I talk a lot about uh, the smaller class sizes and the availability of faculty and, yes. and the, the opportunity given to students to collaborate with professors, um, with my office, with the Career Development Center, with all of the areas here on campus. And my advice, and I'm sure Dr. Rampal will agree with me, is it's never too early to, to start thinking about what your next move is going to be. Right. And with with all of these all of these opportunities for collaboration, you know, don't wait until your third or fourth year exactly to go talk to these people. You know, right. start to develop those re the uh, those relationships uh, and start building your network on the first day. You know, right. and and see what what path um, is going to fit you as the individual. And uh, yeah. And, and, and one of the things that we do is, is, you know, as soon as you start, you're assigned a, a, a faculty advisor. Yeah. And, you know, the faculty advisor will definitely advise you uh, on, on, you know, curricular matters as to what courses you should be taking. Uh, uh, you know, and, and the order in which you need to be doing that, but they also are a very good resource for uh, career advisement, Absolutely. right? So, yeah. you know, as soon as you start, you know, start talking about, uh, you know, okay, you know, what can I do with, 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 with this uh, major? And uh, most of the times, you know, it will be a conversation where the faculty uh, will try and uh, figure out, you know, what is it that you really find interesting and what you're passionate about and try to guide you in, in, in the uh, best way possible so that you can achieve your, uh, you know, uh, goals. And so, yeah. and, and the other thing, uh, 
So I, I have had the privilege of working in, you know, four different universities. Uh, and one of the things I can say is that SUNY Plattsburgh is actually, you know, as they say, you know, it's the right size, uh, you know, uh, university. It is not too big. It's not too small. Uh, it is big enough that you have uh, everything you would find in a much bigger university. But it is small enough that, uh, you know, you have the personal human touch. Uh, you know, most of our faculty uh, in the School of Business, if they are here on campus, the days they are here on campus, their doors are open, which means that you can actually stop by even if you don't have an appointment to, to meet. If the door is open, it is an invitation for you to come in and, and talk. And a lot of times, you know, you might just want to say hello and, uh, you know, have a conversation about uh, cricket or something, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, 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 and and that's how you make those connections. And uh, you know, uh, we, I, I have students. So I've been here about thirteen years, and I have students who still, uh, uh, you know, stay in touch. Uh, students who I, uh, you know, who graduated uh, in the first year I was here. Uh, but we made those connections and uh, we stay in touch. Yeah. So, and, and, you know, typically it is because you have the connection, you stay in touch. Otherwise you'll say, okay, you know, I'm, I'm moving on. I don't really care about uh, the university, but most of our graduates do. Yeah. Well, and I, I say that too, in my original presentation of, um, I use myself as an example. I, when I was an undergrad, I went to a smaller liberal arts college, mm -hmm. just like Plattsburgh. And I am still in touch with my professors from that time. And when I, when I uh, applied for this job here at Plattsburgh, the first reference on my resume was my professor from 16 <laughs> years ago. Right. You know? And because that he that's my network now you know yeah. that that's yeah. and and i built that relationship and i nurtured it over time and that's exactly right. what our students right. do here and right. um yeah it, it's it's uh it's it's really the one of the more important things i think right. you can do and yeah. th that brings me to another um idea of that a lot of students uh they're maybe they're sitting here and they know they want to enter business but they don't know which avenue they want to take. Um, you know, they're, they're maybe a little confused about what it is they really want to do. Well, in this situation, I, I would advise to just pick something, mm -hmm. just, right. just pick something and, and then, and start the process. And when you mm -hmm. get here, talk to your advisors, your, right. your department advisor, the academic advisor, who, whoever, right. And, and then start to fine tune it because right. one of the, another advantage of a liberal arts college like this is those core classes are the same, right? no, no matter what, which avenue you mm -hmm. end up taking. So right. just because, you know, you're a senior in high school now, or you just finished high school and you aren't sure which route to take, that is completely normal. <laughs> Most right. <laughs> most students are that way. I changed my major three times when I was an undergraduate student, <laughs> you know, and, and, yeah. I, and right now I'm not doing anything related to those three majors. So, you know, it, it, it's a it's a long journey and don't feel like you have to make all of the, the solid set in stone decisions right now as a first year undergraduate student. Right. If you're interested in business you know, choose business administration or, or anything. It doesn't matter. Choose something to get your foot in that door and then work with the people here to figure out what, you know, what path is right for you. Yeah. And, and, and that, that would be my advice on, on that. And I know it, students ask me this all the time, but Peter, I don't know exactly what mm -hmm. I want to major in. That is completely normal. So, yeah. And I think, and what I remember from, uh, you know, when I was applying for undergraduate programs in India, you you kind of had to choose, you know, and you were then locked into that program, and that is definitely not the case. That is not here. the case. No. So so you have the ability to uh, uh, 
uh, you know, take courses, see what really interests you, what, you know, yep. uh, you're passionate about and, yep. uh, uh, you know, go for that. Absolutely. So I think that, that that's the biggest advantage of coming to a, a, a liberal arts uh, a university like uh, Plattsburgh. Yep. Because it gives you a lot of uh, opportunity to find yourself. Yeah. Yep. And and that's that, that can't be stressed enough. And I know students who are just starting this process, they don't realize that yet mm -hmm. because they haven't yes. they haven't been involved in it. But right. um, here are two two people right now telling you that that's <laughs> true. So <laughs> please, uh, you know, please, please listen and believe us. Believe us. Right. Um, so, Dr. Ampal, I have a question here. Um, is the economics major a BA or a BS? I believe it's a BS. Uh huh. Okay, it is a bachelor in science. And yes. could you could you talk a little about um, maybe touch again because we were talking about you know maybe you don't know exactly what route to take. What if a student wants to double major, or what if a student wants um, you know a minor in something that's maybe not typically in the business field or something like that? So we actually have students like that. So uh, you know. Uh, so, so with, with management, one of the fields that is, is quite well related is psychology. So we've had students who've double majored in management and psychology. Uh, psychology is in arts and sciences. It's, it's you know, uh, a, a very different uh, field. But again, I think if you plan and, uh, uh, you know, kind of decide reasonably early, it is definitely doable. Like I mentioned for MIS, we have uh, students who either double major in computer science or take a minor in computer science. We have uh, computer science students who minor in MIS or uh, you know add MIS as a second major, especially those who are interested in cybersecurity. So, so there is a lot of over overlap. We have students in, you know, with, uh, 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 majors in mathematics and economics, right? Economics and finance is a good double major. That way you get your STEM field as well as uh, finance. But, uh, uh, you know, again, everything is possible provided, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're reasonably flexible and you, uh, you know, talk uh to to uh, you know your advisor who might suggest you go talk to the department chair of that uh, program and it doesn't really matter whether it is in the school of business or or outside if it is outside it takes a little bit more uh, uh planning in order to make it happen but it is definitely doable yep yeah i mean it, it it's important to know i mean the opportunities are there Yes, and it's it's up to you as the individual student right. to right. to seek out those opportunities. Right, um, and so so we are we are here for you. We want we want yeah. to, uh, you know, ensure that you're successful in 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 whatever it is that you you want to do. Absolutely. Uh, if, if if you the student are successful, then we are successful. Exactly. I mean, we're all in this in this together, and and so you know, we're gonna go out to to meet you there and to provide whatever it is that you need but the thing is is that you have to you have to <laughs> to take it right exactly it. yeah <laughs> and you know i i'm gonna i'm gonna uh throw my new friend here under the bus i i know if, if you all are looking at this screen you see this very handsome gentleman pratham biani here uh -huh. um he has reached out to me on numerous occasions to just to make sure that uh, you know he has his ducks in a row, so to speak, that he has that he has the things um, needed for admission and and the, the documents and the materials and things like that, and that's that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. You know, he he sends me a message and you know, hey, is this? Did you receive this? What else mm -hmm. do I need to do? Whatever, because right now he's in the admission process, right? right. And and I'm the person that will that he works with. And when he moves on to the next section, I'm confident that he's going to reach out to whoever is next right. in line. Right. And, and that's, the, that's the kind of student that we feel really good about because he obviously is concerned and he's right. 
taking advantage of the opportunities that he has. And I would recommend that for everyone here on this call. Um, Definitely. I mean, I, 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 yeah. So I, I have a student who's who's uh, currently uh, at home in, in Dubai and uh, he's my advisee and, you know, he will shoot me off an email saying, hey, Dr. Ampar, can we Zoom? Uh, I have this question. Yeah. And we Zoom, we talk for five minutes, we resolve the situation and, you know, it's taken care of. Yep. Uh, so, but if you don't reach out, I don't really know. You don't know. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I can't help you if, if, if I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and students always ask me things about um, job placements or mm -hmm. about internship placements and stuff. And, you know, that comes down to the student. Right. I mean, it, it, we can give you support. We can mm -hmm. give you opportunity. We can right. advise you. But at the end of the day, it's mm -hmm. up to you. To, to make things happen. Um, right. and, and the best and, way to do that is to build your network and utilize utilize the um, you know the, the advantages that you have and, and make the most of it. So right. And and one of the things that I want to you know piggyback on on, on this with is uh, we we're talking about relationships with our students and our graduates. So what happens is uh, invariably, you know, a student who graduated maybe 10 years, 12 years ago is now in a position to hire and, you know, given their relationships with us, they will reach out to us and say, hey, you know, Dr. Rampal, I have this uh, need for someone with such and such uh, skill set. Do you know of anyone? Now, if you've been in touch with me, if I know you, if I know what your career aspirations are, and if I have a sense of you know, your, your uh, uh, passion and dedication, I, I would have no hesitation in saying, hey, you know, I, I have this student who's graduating, you know, in, in, in uh, May and, you know, he or she is awesome. You know, I think they would be a good fit. Why don't you talk to, them? right? So I can do the introduction. I can, you know, pitch you as, as, a, as a good uh, hire. But then the next step, of course, is, you know, you doing your best and, and, and you know, taking whatever is offered and running with it. Absolutely. And it, it, it happens more often than not. Most people are, are uh, uh, you know, more confident about hiring you if they, they, they have, uh, you know, a sense uh, 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 of, of how good you are based on the recommendations from people who know you and they know so right so it's it's all about networking as, absolutely as, uh, Peter said. In, in the in the end of the day i always say in the end of the day it's not what you know mm -hmm. it's who you know right. that is the most important it is it you know and doors, that's yes. not to say that you, you 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 don't need to have knowledge about what it is you're doing because you <laughs> certainly do yeah. but <laughs> you know it, it, it's it's yeah just what you said is absolutely true it's that networking and when i was uh when i was an undergraduate student or when i was a graduate student or you know in my job now i always made a point one or two times in the semester to go meet with my advisor mm -hmm. just like dr ron paul said earlier just if it was to talk about cricket or something mm -hmm. you know like I, I would go and talk to them about music or baseball or, or whatever interests, mutual interests we had, right. just to strengthen that bond and that, mm -hmm. you know, that collaboration. And then, as I said, when I apply for a job here, I mm -hmm. used my professor from 16 years ago <laughs> that I still talk to. And I still yeah. email about twice a year, just yeah. saying, hey, how's it going, you know? Mm -hmm whatever and that cannot be stressed enough that importance so it's i'm very glad you're saying the same things it's nice to, to I, I feel like hey. i have some, some validation here <laughs> most definitely <laughs> yeah. so are there any other questions um from our students out there uh anything else you you'd like to know or ask about um about any of the programs uh once we apply how long do we have to wait till we hear from the university um not too long actually once you apply um you need to apply and 
of course, since you are our favorite students being fact students, um, we have waived your application fee. So uh, you will apply to us and indicate that you are a fact student um, and it will take, you know, it takes some time, but we will then ask you to upload materials. Uh, we need a lot of different materials from you. Um, the best way to get clarification on that is to contact me. Um, that's how this all works, right? And we will email you and update you on the status of the materials. Maybe if, if you send something that's maybe not quite what we need, we will let you know that. And we will, we will be with you through that process. So once you apply and you upload your materials, um, you know, it, it doesn't take all that long. We, that said, we are getting lots of application um, because I'm very good at my job and my job is to get applications. So we, <laughs> we, are, we are getting a lot. So, you know, it takes us time to go through these, um, but being fact students, we, we do kind of give you a slight priority, um, but it doesn't take all that long. So, and you can always reach out to me and ask about things and, and you know, the best way to do things and all that. And uh, that's okay. That's what I, that's my job. So feel free to ask questions. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you, Dr. Ron Paul. Uh, I was very glad to hear from you. Thank you, me. Well, <laughs> you're welcome for arranging such welcome. informative yeah. sessions regularly, which is a great help in making the correct decisions. Prathan, thank you. That's why we do it. That's why we do it. You, you need to understand that here in this process, right, my office is here to walk with you and, and to take you step by step on what needs to happen. When you get here, uh, another department in my office will work more closely with you. Um, and as well as the department that you you choose. So, you know, once you're here, you'll be interacting with Dr. Ron Paul and the rest of the business faculty and the business college. Um, you won't work with me so much. Hopefully you will stop into my office and say hello Hi. because you need to keep building that network and nurturing, right? So um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but but right now you're working with me and you will move you'll move down the road and uh, eventually you'll be working with everyone. So I love to attend the sessions from SUNY Plattsburgh. That's what I like to hear. Thank you. Thank you. I, I hope we're doing it well. Um, so yeah, that's great. Uh, I appreciate everyone's attention. Um, I will put, my contact is, is easy. I, I will send um, an email to you students um, I will put a couple of links maybe to the business and uh, economics college. Um, I'll put Dr. Ron Paul's email address on there. And I will also post a link to this uh, webinar. So if you need to look back over anything, you can do so. Um, but I will, I will reach out to you. Feel free to contact me um, if you have any questions about admission stuff or, or whatever. And feel free to contact the business college right. with more with more program questions. I, I can't answer those. I don't know, but they can. Right. <laughs> so yeah, most yeah. most definitely. So if you send me an email and if I can't answer your questions, I will refer you to someone who can. So you know, we will we will definitely uh, you know take care of that. Yep, absolutely. Okay, so if there are no more questions, um, we can call it a day here. I know we're all busy. Uh, please do send the recording. Yes, I will send all. I will send this recording out. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. So, um, alrighty. Well, thanks everyone for joining us, and uh, we hope to hear from you soon. And we hope to see you here in Plattsburgh. Stay yeah. safe out there, and. Uh, that's about it. Have a good evening. Take care. Bye-bye.